Hi guys, in this video, I'm just gonna go through um, my website and grade it against the ISTE student standards, the rubric for the website. And I think that'll give you an idea of where you might need to improve upon yours. So I've got my website pulled up. I'm gonna go grab the ISTE student standards and drop that into our window here. And I know that I'm being graded on empowered learner, digital citizen, knowledge construction, creative communication, and global collaborator. I started my website over right along with you guys, and I'm not done with it. Um, but I thought, well, I'm going to struggle through this in front of you. That way you can um, apply that same understanding to your own website. So if I know that, okay, empowered learners, my first one, students can leverage technology to take an active role in choosing, achieving, and demonstrating competency and learning goals. So I'm going to open that up and look at the indicators to see if I do any of these things. Do I articulate personal learning goals? Do I develop strategies for learning or leveraging technology? Do I play with tech? Do I build networks? Do I customize my environment? Am I developing that professional learning network, say on Twitter or Facebook? Am I using technology to seek feedback? Am I, do I understand the fundamental concepts of tech operations? Do I demonstrate the ability to choose? Am I trying to troubleshoot, et cetera? So I'm gonna go back to my website and see, am I doing that stuff somewhere on my website? So, okay. If I know that, okay, setting goals, playing with tech, and developing that professional learning network. So I'm going to go look at my pages. Actually, I'm going to look at the published version and just to kind of, so I can see what it looks like from the users. All right. So my learning goals, I am struggling to learn the Arduino. It's just something on my radar. I obviously haven't even written about it yet. I'm going to write about and document how I'm trying to play with it. It's a struggle. I'm not good at it. Here's what I'm doing to improve. Same thing with podcasting. I uh, have been trying to learn those skills uh, with a lot of false starts, but I'm trying to play. Okay. Uh, and I think I actually have a link oh, uh, to the podcast itself. Um, so I, I devoted a page just to talking about my PLN. So I would recommend that. So I've, I've written about podcasts, my podcast work, books that I really enjoy reading. Ah, here we go. So I embedded my tweets, the most recent tweets. I wanted to show that I'm making that effort to engage on Twitter. Uh, and then this is a Facebook group that I've joined and I participate in. Uh, and so I've got different things. I've got Twitter, reading, my efforts toward podcasting, like why my PLN matters. So I kind of feel like when I look at the ISTE standards for empowered learning that I've got lots of different examples. Um, I'm going to go down to global collaborator because I think that's my weakest one. So students use digital tools to broaden their perspectives and enrich their learning by collaborating with others and working in teams locally and globally. Yipes. Okay, so I have to find evidence where I've worked with other people. Am I using digital tools to connect with learners with a variety of backgrounds and cultures and engaging in different, like to broaden mutual understanding and learning? Am I using collaborative technologies to work with others? Am I contributing to teams and am I exploring global, local and global issues? Ooh. Yeah, this one's my weakest one. So I do use digital tools. Um, so maybe I would screenshot a Google meet. I got to do that or a zoom call. I've been in on like a hundred zoom calls in the past month and I don't think I've screenshot any of them. And, uh, Oh, when I record my podcast, most of the people are not sitting next to me. Obviously we're using Google meet and then I record it and then just pull off the audio. So I need to screenshot that. So I've got some more, I do these things, but I'm terrible at documenting them. I see. Uh, okay. Team playing in a team. Um, hmm. so I need to go back and find a collaborative Google doc or a slideshow or something that I've worked with other people on and include that as evidence. I do a lot of things solo. So this one's tough, but I got to think through when have I collaborated with someone else or when have I been in the lab and just played with tech with other people, which we did before this whole thing came unglued. So 
that one, you may have to also create those moments for yourself by collaborating with someone else on a project. Um, but it, it wouldn't even have to be really grounded in school stuff. So for example, our, um, let's see, I'm in this, uh, we're working on Platteville Dairy Days and I, that's, we can't get together. So I could leverage tools to be able to proceed forth and collaborate. Like I wrote up my, um, we're starting the dairy goat show. So that's all in Google. And I could collaborate with another person further away on improving what that show is going to look like. So, uh, ideas in my head, but not really, uh, evidence. Well, like I would give myself a bad, not a great grade, a one on global collaborator, not because I didn't do it. I think I've got it, but I just didn't show it on my website. Um, definitely one of my weaknesses, creative communicator, students clearly express themselves for a variety of purposes. Uh, I've used the appropriate platform and tools. Uh, I create original works. So anytime I played with stuff, uh, communicate complex ideas, maybe a uh, visualization model or simulation and publish or present content that customizes the message. Okay. So <clears throat> your website <laughs> is a really strong, like in itself is evidence of your ability to creatively communicate. I did that by writing about my, like writing my website, designing it. But for several pages, I included video of me explaining the page because some people want that video interaction. It's more personal. Uh, and for some folks, they just learn better with video. So do you have a video of yourself at all explaining your website? I do right on my homepage. Uh, where to go? Here it is. Well, my PLN, I made a video. Um, and these are short because our attention spans are, are horrible, right? So mine's like 30 seconds. This one, what a horrible freeze right there. But uh, it's 30 seconds of me explaining what my website's about. That's part of creative communicating, right? So knowledge construction, how do I pull information together? So how do we curate a variety of resources using digital tools to construct knowledge. So I've got pages of ed tech tools. That's me constructing knowledge. So my favorite resources, especially the geo stuff, that's all me trying to construct knowledge and make sense of it. I feel real strong about this one. How do we build knowledge by exploring issues and pro problems, developing ideas and theory? Like how do I gather an understanding. And then I show that on my website, right? So uh, I feel pretty good about how I'm doing that one. Uh, digital citizen. So recognize the rights, responsibilities, yada, yada, yada. Okay. Being legal, ethical, and um, safe. So am I managing my digital identity and reputation? So when I embed my tweets, there are not a bunch of tweets in there that are inappropriate or mm, unprofessional, unbecoming of an educator. That's a, a line you probably should be thinking about, right? Um, am I respecting the rights and obligations of others' intellectual property? I do not make YouTube videos where I put somebody else's music that I don't have permission to use in my stuff. I think that looks terrible for a teacher. You should avoid that. Uh, I know a lot of teachers will say, yeah, but it's for educational gain. Well, not, not when you put it online. Uh, and most of our stuff is digital in some type of format online. Okay. So do you manage your personal uh, data and maintain data privacy and security? I can't put it that one. I just can't do online unless I were making a little mini unit about um, like cybersecurity for kids, which we should be doing in somewhere in, in your curriculum. All right. So I've kind of stumbled through all of them. Uh, I feel real good about like, I feel like I would give myself a three for empowered learner knowledge constructor and creative communicator, digital citizen. I would give myself a two, uh, and global collaborator, a one. Um, so I'm not there yet, but I'm getting, I'm getting close. So, um, so hopefully that'll help you evaluate yourself as you kind of look at your own website to see where you at with things. Remember, this is going to roll over into your next ed tech class. And hopefully you'll actually use this on your resume, uh, as you continue to show evidence of your passion for learning and working with kids. Um, you let me know if you have any questions, you guys. Um, see you later.